Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Billy Ho Sports Breeders' Cup number 41 at Del Mar, less than a month away. Doing lots of preview videos. I've already got first look profiles on the Breeders' Cup Classic and uh, the Distaff as well. So those are already out. Give them a look. Today, we're going to talk Breeders' Cup turf. It's the Longines turf. Most coveted race next to the Classic, I think, always brings the global vibe uh, with the Euro invaders. And we talk about, is there any way to beat them and, and th things of that nature. But there's 12 of the 14 horses are, are from uh, overseas, so kind of hard to beat them that way. But anyway, the analytics are telling me, reviewing uh, that the majority of people viewing the shows are not subscribed. So if I ask, uh, if you're one of them that are intent on watching the show, do it right now. Just go down there and click that subscribe button. It'll only take a couple of seconds. Much appreciated. You do a lot to help the channel grow. And uh, while you're at it, click on that like as well. And uh, you can leave a comment and uh, tell me who you like in the upcoming Breeders' Cup turf. You would have done me a great service, and I genuinely appreciate it. So let's get into it. Let's look at the Breeders' Cup turf. It's a 12 furlong marathon, pitting 14 of the best long-distance turfers in the world. The internationals have dominated this race for years. Three major Euro trainers uh, that will send the best of the best over to Del Mar. We're going to start with uh, the, the winner of last year's uh, turf, August Rodin. Four-year-old Phenom is a uh, winner last year, returning for Aiden O'Brien. Uh, was a very patient ride, got a great trip. Ryan Moore was just tucked in there inside, stayed the course, and then the rail opened up and he shot down the uh, the inside stretch all the way home to get that victory. So uh, he took his then three-year-old straight to the winner's circle. Just one for four, I believe, this season. One for five. I can't remember how many starts, but just the one win. Uh Going to be there to ready to defend his title. O'Brien's going to have others. Uh, there's another one uh, by the name of Luxembourg. That's a five-year-old by Camelot, one for five in his own right this season. His win came at, uh, yes, the answer to the Jeopardy question, worth its salt. That was Epson race course. Uh, Jockey Ryan Moore led the way in that one. It was a bounce back from a disappointing trip to the Middle East. So, uh Aiden O'Brien's going to send at least those two, if not more. But this is kind of a top 10 list. So uh, if I didn't mention that sooner, you saw it on the thumbnail. Charlie Appleby has got a plethora of horses he's sending over, one of which is the six-year-old Irish bred Rebels Romance. Four wins uh, this year alone, uh, three of which group ones. Won the Breeders' Cup turf as a four-year-old when it was at Keeneland in 2022. So Appleby's uh, Appleby is pleased with his training and how he looks. So he should be uh, back in top form and a major player in the this year's event. Then he has Nation's Pride. These next couple of horses are really close one-twos. Nation's Pride is a five-year-old Irish bred. Uh, tracked to those leaders in the Arlington Million and then throttled throttled the field and throttled down in the stretch to a comfortable victory there in the Arlington Million. So uh, he also has a stable mate by the name of Measured Time. And, and in the previous race to that, this amazing four-year-old by Frankel took his partner in, to task in the Manhattan Stakes at Saratoga. He drove clear to win by two uh, by two lengths as his mate finished uh, finished well down the stretch for the second place. Uh, so you really can't cover Charlie Appleby without mentioning a kind of a, a warm-hearted silver knot. This one is just a try-hard, dominated at the grade two level, multiple grade two wins, but has yet to get over that grade one hump. Gave it two cracks this uh, spring and summer. Uh, the opportunities were in the Sword Dancer and uh, at Saratoga and the Hirsch. Turf Classic was at Aqueduct, part of the Belmont at the Big A. 
So both of them were valiant efforts on the front end, ending in third place finishes. But the big winner of those two races uh, is trained by Christoph Clement, Farbridge, four-year-old by English Channel, really blossomed this season. Things didn't look too good for him uh, after the ninth place finish in uh, the UN stakes back in July. Didn't have really good finishes before that either. But then he hit a stride and he nailed those two races. One of them was on the front end where the pace was just weird. And uh, and then he was kind of just gifted the lead. Uh, and that was, uh, they didn't, he didn't get the credit he deserved after winning that race, saying he stole it, but he raced the race that they gave him to race. But then in the Hirsch, come off the pace in that one and proved he can win under those circumstances. Clement actually has another very quality three-year-old in uh, by the name of Carson's Run, who just recently won at odds of three to two. Uh, this one first drew attention last year as a two-year-old by winning the grade one summer stakes at Woodbine, then earned him a spot in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Now, fast forward to 2024, a grade one win at Saratoga, then a second place in a grade two event at Kentucky Downs, then scoring the grade one win at Aqueduct in the Jockey Club Derby. Uh, this one is set up for a real bright future, most definitely. So another horse that we're going to mention on, I think that cracks the top 10 list, uh, basically geographically, trainer Philip D'Amato has a gold Phoenix, which is a six-year-old gelding who has a win on the Del Mar turf in the Del Mar handicap. Jockey Kyle Frey stalked the pace from the inside, saving ground, then hit the stretch and got that inside rail, similarly to what August Rodin did and uh, in, in that uh, Breeders' Cup turf last year. But he closed well, got up late. Good showing in last year's turf, closed as a at, at 51 to 1, got the fourth place finish. So uh, another one that closed pretty well at uh, odds of 25 to 1 in last year's race, finishing third, was uh, Shahira. <laughs> I, I should have got the pronunciation of that. Uh, Shirar. I apologize for that. That's just terrible that I didn't check the pronunciation on that before. Japan bred horse finished third in last year's edition of the turf at 25 to one sired by the famous closer uh, from uh, this famous Japanese closer deep impact. Uh, this six-year-old earned over $10 million in his career. So going to be some shakeups before we get to the final 14 horse field. And it's possible a couple of ladies might try to crash the party. We don't really know what, what they're going to do because there is the Philly and Mare turf that's going to be a strong race. I'll have a preview on that coming up pretty soon. You have the turf mile. You have the turf sprint. You have all kinds of stuff coming up. But this was a top 10 contenders list as I saw it. And you can see it in the back. I'm not going to go over each individual horse naming them off, but August Rodin, I believe, was number one. Then we had Measure Time at number two. Nation's Pride is three. Farbridge, four. Those two are pretty close, two, three, four. Luxembourg, five, six, Rebels Romance, seven, Shaharar. And uh, number eight, Carson's Run. Number nine, Gold Phoenix. Number 10, Silver Knot. So those are just the top 10 initially on the first look that, that I saw so far. And uh, so, if you have subscribed by now, I hope you have. I appreciate it. If you're still watching and you haven't, do it right now. I'll wait. Be sure to set your notifications, too, so you don't miss anything. A lot of subscribers fail to do that. Uh, just set that notification bell, and then you'll be alerted on any new material that I'm putting out. So, like and share also, and until the next time, we'll see you soon. Hello, Billy Ho here. As the sole creator for this channel, I need you, the viewer, to help me grow. Just by subscribing to the channel and clicking that like button alone, you can help spread Billy Ho Sports to the racing community on YouTube.